Hi, and this is a video about the quantum mechanical model of the atom, our current model of the atom. Um, so we, um, you guys saw, saw a video, we have to, just like light, we think of light as a wave, we have to accept that sometimes it acts as a particle. For electrons, we know that they're particles, but now we have to accept that they can also act as waves. So when you have a wave, there's something called a standing wave. Um, if you've ever taken like a rope, um, like tied to a tree or with someone else, and you kind of jiggle it up and down until you get it to the point where it always has the same place where it's high and low, that's what a standing wave is. And um, when you look at the atom, the electrons are acting as waves also. So they have to be um, somewhere around the nucleus. They can only exist at those frequencies that give them the standing wave. Um, and the frequency corresponds to a certain energy. This is the equation that we've talked about before. We're not going to calculate with the equation, but just know that energy and frequency are directly proportional. Heisenberg uncertainty principle is part of this quantum mechanical model. What it's saying is that you cannot know exactly where the electron is. Um, so when we learn, um, you know, as a ninth grader possibly, you know, how you put your electrons in certain rings, um, that we, we can't really do um, because an electron is like the size of a photon of light. So if we try to observe an electron, the photon itself will move the electron. So once you hit it with the photon, you no longer know where it's at. I know that seems weird. My analogy is if you were bowling in the dark completely, the ball would be your photon, your electron would be down here at the end of the lane. If you roll the photon at the electron and you hit it, you know where the electron was, but it's no longer there because you've moved it. So you just, you can't know exactly where electrons are. <clears throat> um, Schrodinger's uh, the person that did the math that works for our quantum mechanical model. Um, just showing you a little bit of it. Don't worry, you don't ever have to look at this equation or use it. But this is all based on math. Um, Bohr kind of made the assumption that the atom, um, the energy levels were quantized, but Schrodinger's equations prove this. So quantum theory uses the math to describe the wave properties of the electrons and other really small um, objects, but we're gonna focus on electrons. Um, so the solutions to Schrodinger's equation are known as wave functions, and the wave function gives the probability of finding an electron at a given place around the nucleus. So over here in this picture, you can see the nucleus is in the middle. The dark, it's denser, more um, dots. The dots would be the location of an electron at any given point. So it's trying to show you that you're more likely to find the electron kind of close in here, but it is also possible it's way out there. So you can't know exactly where they're at. It's based on probability. So according to Schrodinger's equation, electrons have atomic orbitals um, that also have those quantized energies, just like Bohr's model. Um, so they, um, we also have what we call an atomic orbital, which is that space where the electron is likely to be found um, and the orbital can hold up to two electrons. Back to this, sorry. So this is different than an orbit. So when you guys learned um, Bohr model um, in ninth grade, like if you were doing nitrogen, you would have had seven protons, seven neutrons in the nucleus, and then you would have put two electrons in the first level, and then five in the second. Maybe you would have written them out even. Um, so this, these are orbits, like planets. Electrons don't really do this. 
But the Bohr model is still really helpful because it did help us to understand that the level, the energy levels are quantized. So an electron can be in a certain energy level or another, but never in between. So we do have something called quantum numbers. Um, these are actual letters, um, but they are um, the properties of the orbitals and they um, tell us kind of the a way to describe where the electrons are likely to be found. The first three quantum numbers, um, they are N, um, L, and M sub L, and I'm going to talk about each one. These are actual mathematical solutions to Schrodinger's um, equation. So the first quantum number is N. It's called the principal quantum number. It's the main one. So it, it tells you the energy level that the electron's in. Um, N can be 1, 2, three and so on, positive integers. Um, it tells you, so like here, this first, um, you know, if that were an electron cloud, the electron in N equals one is gonna be closer to the nucleus, not as far away. Whereas here we have N equals four. Um, and here's another diagram and you'll notice the spacing between the levels is not equal, um, but still N equals six, is much further away from the nucleus would be down here and then this would be kind of like if you were to do rings which we know aren't really true but it's still sometimes helpful to understand the atom and the energy levels so the bigger the n the further the, the electron is away from the nucleus the more energy it has n can be determined by using the periodic table if I read these going across, these rows or periods, the first row is n equals 1. I would label this on your periodic table. You can pause me and go grab it. n equals 4, 5, 6, and 7. And remember right here, that's really this. So this is really n equals 6 and n equals 7. Um, so the next quantum number we use, it's like a lowercase l, but a lot of times they have kind of a loop into it. It's not a Greek letter, I don't think. Um, anyways, it's um, this is going to tell you then the different shapes of with that are called sublevels that exist in the main or principal energy level. Um, the shapes um, are, let me show you. So if my angular momentum quantum number is zero, then I'm talking about an S sublevel or shape. Sorry. So that would be spherical around the X, Y, Z axis. If L equals one, then I'm talking about the letter P, which is this kind of dumbbell shape. Um, and it goes X, Y, and Z and they overlap. If the angular momentum quantum number is two, then I'm talking about the D shape. And the D shapes are, um, they kind of, they're kind of clover like in the XYZ with four lobes. Um, but there's also this other one. I like to call this one dual pacifier. And I'll show you that one later. Um, but you would never need to sketch these or even try to describe them. Uh, but it's, uh, you will be using them. Um, if the angular momentum quantum number is three, then we're talking about the F. And the F shapes are, um, sometimes we call them fancy because they're really fancy. So I'm going to make them bigger so you can see a little better. Um, so again, they're more complicated than the Ds. There's more lobes. Um, they can go in the X, Y, Z. There's also another kind of dual pacifier one. Um, and remember, these are these contain orbitals that contain the electrons. So this is a good summary and I would put this in your notes. So they're all related. So if, if we have um, N equals two, for example, we're in the second mean energy level from the nucleus. We don't really, we're not in rings, but sometimes it's helpful to think that way. So when N equals two, L is gonna equal zero and one. So L is equal to 
and minus one. So if I have a zero angular um, momentum quantum number of zero, that means that I'll have an S sublevel, which is a sphere. And because it also equals one, because N2, if I put a two in here, I'm going to get one. And then um, any number leading up to one, which would also include zero. So then I would have the, <clears throat> the P um, sublevel, which is those dumbbells. So when I get to n equals 4, for example, L equals, the biggest L value is n minus 1, which would be 4 minus 1, which is 3, but then including 0 up to 3. So this is the first time that we'll see the F. So what I'm trying to show you here is that when you're in the first main energy level, there is only one sublevel, which is the S sphere. When you're in the second level, there's two slightly different energy levels and they have different shapes. One is a sphere, which is bigger than the n equals one sphere. Um, and then one is those dumbbells. This will make way more sense as we go on and I'm going to show you some animations of this. If you're in the third energy level, now you're going to have three different sublevels that are all um, just slightly different in energy and shape. So you would see the S, P, and the D and so on. So I'm going to keep going, but then I'm going to show you guys um, a lot more. So um, the third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number, M sub L. And this is just telling us the way that the different sublevel shapes can orient themselves in space. So this one makes more sense if you look at this. So an S, when you have S, it only has one way that it can orient itself. So it has what we call an orbital, one orbital. So it can hold up to two electrons. P, here's those P shapes. There's three ways it can go because there's X, Y, and Z direction. So three orbitals, each orbital could hold up to two electrons. So you could have up to six electrons. The D, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five five ways it could be in space, so five orbitals. So the D shape can hold up to 10 electrons. And then the F has seven. There's seven different pictures here or ways that it can be around um, the X, Y, and Z axis. Last quantum number is called the, um, sometimes we call it the magnetic spin or the spin quantum number. This is just saying that electrons can only be together in an orbital which can hold up to two only if one is spinning clockwise and one is going counterclockwise. Um, so what we do, the spin quantum number is going to be, it's either positive one half or negative one half. Later on, we're going to go to um, electron configuration and off-bow diagrams. And here, I'll just show you. So if this were the orbital, the box is representing the orbital. And if I have two electrons, one of the electrons, so the arrow is representing an electron, one would spin up at plus one half and one would spin down. So they can't be together both spinning the same way. Um, you know, they couldn't both be going down. So they have to, in order to be together, um, they create a magnetic field, and in order for that to work, you have to have opposite spin. That's all I have for now, but um, we will talk much more about this.